Hello! Welcome to the Music Museum Online! I'm so glad that you're here today. My name is Erin May, and I am a music teacher in Wichita, Kansas. And I get to visit with you guys today to show you my favorite instrument. This is a mountain dulcimer. It's sometimes called a lap dulcimer or an Appalachian dulcimer. And this instrument comes from the Appalachian Mountains in the United States, um, in states like North, North Carolina, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee, is where this instrument comes from. So the mountain dulcimer, like most Americans, has some ancestors from other places. So ethnomusicologists have been able to find instruments related to the mountain dulcimer in places like Germany, where they call it a Scheitholt, or Hungary, where they call it a Hommel, or Iceland, where they call it a Langspiel, France, where they call it an Epinette. They're all sort of similar. They're in the same family called the Zither family of instruments. Um, but the dulcimer as we know it and as we play it now came from the Appalachian Mountains. So it is considered to be an American instrument. Um, there is another instrument you might have heard of called a dulcimer that doesn't look anything like this one. It is called a hammer dulcimer and it's really big and it has sometimes a hundred strings on it. This dulcimer has one, two, three, four strings on it, and two of them sound like the same. They're really close together and they get played like they're just one string. So dulcimers have three or four strings usually, the mountain kind. The hammer dulcimer is this other kind that's really big with a hundred strings. And they're actually not really related at all. They're not even, they didn't come from the same place, but somehow they got the same name. So there's a hammer dulcimer and there's a mountain dulcimer. This one's the mountain dulcimer. And where this mountain dulcimer comes from in the Appalachian Mountains, in the early days when settlers were first arriving there, they didn't have a lot of fancy things. They didn't have any plastic. So they built these instruments all out of wood. And sometimes the frets where we press down against the string would be made out of a staple or a nail bent over. They were really um, sharp, and so if you ran your finger along the fretboard of a, one of the first mountain dulcimers built in the mountains, it would cut your fingers open. And that's no fun at all. You can't play for very long if you do that. So the folks there were real creative, and they figured out that they could take a stick, and if they held that stick in their hand, you can use a round stick or a flatter stick that you've carved down. If you would hold that in your left hand, it would allow you to press down on the strings right next to those pokey frets and get a really nice sound out of the instrument without cutting open your fingers. That seems pretty good, right? But with the other hand, you're strumming across steel strings, and if you use your fingers, it's kind of a soft sound. Have you noticed that? It's not very loud. So they did a little more looking around. They didn't have any kind of plastic picks hanging out around there. But what they did have was a whole bunch of feathers. This is a turkey feather, which happens to come from my parents' farm. They found some, there was a turkey that didn't need it anymore. He dropped this feather in their yard. And so they picked it up and gave it to me for my dulcimer. But I'm not actually gonna play it with all the feathers on. If I strip all the feathers off, I'm left with the center spine. And this is the part that I can play my dulcimer with. So if I hold the feather in my right hand and I hold the stick that we call a noter in my left hand, I can make a really traditional dulcimer sound. So I'm gonna play you a little traditional dulcimer tune called Soldier's Joy. <laughs>
that's the sound of a mountain dulcimer played in the traditional early way with a noter in the left hand and a feather in the right hand. Well, as the dulcimer kind of progressed, the frets go across all the strings and they're made out of really soft metal now, so I can run my fingers up and down the fretboard and it doesn't hurt my fingers at all. And I have a fancy pick made out of plastic. This one's even yellow, that's my favorite color, so I like this one a lot. And I can play in a more kind of modern style where I add some chords in and some other fun things like that. I actually started playing the mountain dulcimer when I was seven years old. This was my seventh birthday present was a mountain dulcimer. And I think it's really important for everyone to know that you are not too young to learn how to play an instrument nor are you ever too old to learn how to play an instrument. My dad actually got an instrument at the same time that I did. So he was in his 30s learning how to play an instrument, and I was seven learning how to play an instrument, and we learned right alongside each other, which was really fun. My sister also learned to play an instrument at the same time, so we had a little family band for a long time. So you can pick up an instrument at any age. Some of my students are even in their 80s and are learning to play a new instrument. So you're never too young and you're never too old to learn to play an instrument. And I happen to think that the mountain dulcimer is the best one that you could choose. It's my favorite. So I'm gonna play you one more song on the dulcimer so you can hear another sound of it. This is actually one of the ones I learned when I was pretty young. It's a uh, was made famous by the Carter family called the Wildwood Flower. goodness thank you so much for joining me today at the music museum here online I hope that you'll take some time to look around the other rooms in the museum hear some stories learn about instruments from all over the world meet some other friends who are learning how to play instruments too have a great time exploring at the museum I'm Erin May and I'll see you next time bye bye